that have to do with anything? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? Usually, <laughs> usually, Mr. Director, the music has something to do with the theme of the show. Not today. What do you have scrambled in your head? Hey, we're going to get thrown together in 30 seconds to get on air. Oh, That's okay, why. okay, okay. That's why. Well, truth be told, on the 24th, one day till Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Trento, your host, Enemies of the State, special in-studio guest you're going to meet in a minute. And, yes, yes. and Jerusalem Jane, developing her own fan base here in the yes, United yes. States of America. And we I'm will... the president of the fan club. Yes, you are, <laughs> Schmucky. Schmucky, yeah. Yeah, he's digging Jane, let yeah, me tell he's you. He's liking Jane. That's a little too much. A little too much, yeah, I might six say. Six minutes <laughs> after 4 o'clock on another beautiful Florida afternoon on WSBR Radio, Sunny Boca Raton Radio, 740 AM on your dial. Thank you all for tuning in and uh, uh, listening and for watching on the UnitedWest.org or TeaPartyCommunity.com or Breitbart TV. We appreciate uh, all of that. We had a, a, a heartbreaking Monday and Tuesday doing a two-part series, Cops and the Robbers. If you haven't seen those, please go to our archives, youtube.com slash the United West Cops and the Robbers, two parts, Monday, Tuesday. Pretty deep analysis of the absurdity, the absurdity of the leaders of this country, President Olinsky, President Obama channeling Saul Olinsky, uh, Attorney General Holder, Mayor de Blasio of New York and that other character, Al Sharpton, gathering together to separate this country over racial lines, to turn people against the police in the United States, the unfortunate tragedy that occurred in New York last Saturday afternoon with officers Ramos and, and Lou. Uh, very, very sad situation. You've got to watch those two uh, episodes. Today we have uh, a unique look at Western civilization with someone on the edge of trying to save the West, like the United West. This is an individual with an organization called SaveTheWest.org. And uh, we're going to go to Israel. Dot com. Dot com. Uh, we're going to go to Israel to uh, meet a couple of people. We'll have Arya Gozi, our analyst, on the ground a little later in the show. With our beep machine ready. Great. Yeah, with our beep machine <laughs> ready. No, Ari's gotten a little better. He's an Israeli. Let's introduce our, our guest here. Ken, good friend of ours. How are you doing? Ken Abramowitz, how are you doing? Very good. Good. Good Very to have you here. back in the studio. Ken has been in the studio before, and yes, we have been with Ken in Israel last, uh, was it last year? Yeah. Yeah. Last October. Ken has an organization, SaveTheWest.com. And uh, Ari Egozi, Ken, Ari Egozi, is our guy, one of our guys in Israel, an analyst, national security. He's an Israeli, and sometimes he uses words that aren't allowed on the radio in the United States. So we have to beep, we have to beep him out. But he's getting better. It costs me a lot more work. Yeah, he's getting better. <laughs> and uh, we will have Ari a little bit. He's going to give us an update on the Israeli elections, going to give us an update on some of the national security concerns, and a little look at what's going on in France with the uh, three Alou Akbars over the past couple of days. Um, you know, the natives are getting restless. What can I say? But right now, before we get to our main guest, Ken, in studio, we want to get a quick report in Jerusalem from none other than a, a rousing round of applause. Jerusalem Jane. Everybody for yeah. Jerusalem hey. Jane. Hey. All right, all right. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Jane. How are you? I am good. Shalom from Jerusalem. Well, uh, Shalom. We, we are, we are jealous. Um, what we understand uh, tonight, when, when is the last lighting of uh, the menorah? Tonight, tonight, tonight. and, and uh, uh, I, you know, I plan to go there to uh, take pictures for you guys and make videos, but something changed for me today, so something sorry. Something changed. Well, tell us what, uh, what you think would have happened if you were, uh, you know, at the Kotel, at the Western Wall, some people know it as the Wailing Wall. What, what was going to take place, and then we'll uh, find out why it didn't for you. 
Oh, I went last year, and it's such a thrill to be there because it's it's a, people are rejoicing. You know, it's we are celebrating a miracle with the oil that lasted for eight days, and uh, that it's just a good time. And there's a lot of people, and there are always some kind of a famous celebrity turning on the lights down there. And I didn't, I don't know who it was supposed to be tonight, but it would have been fun. It's such a thrill to be there, and you know, you would have loved it. But I'm sorry. Yeah, Jane was going to uh, live stream for us from the yeah. wall to show some of this. And as you know, she has uh, a Facebook page, Israel One Nation. We can show that in a second. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, we can, we'll, we'll show that. But for some of our new listeners on WSBR at 11 minutes after 4 o'clock and new viewers on the UnitedWest.org, uh, Jane, who are you and what the heck is somebody with an accent like you doing in Jerusalem? Um, one word, Tom, love, I guess I can say. Uh, I love for the Jewish people, I love for the Jewish nation, and to have boots on the ground to stand up for this nation and to speak the truth about what's happening in Israel, what's coming against Israel in a world that is so biased against Israel. Uh, so I try to blog and to write on my page every day uh, what's happening in the news, and then I go make my own news that kind of got me into trouble now. <laughs> well, and then I also, you know, go meet the Jewish people and encourage them and say, you have friends in the world. Jane and I met a couple of weeks back in, uh, in Israel when I was on the, uh, the uh, preliminary tour for our yeah. March 2015 fact-finding mission to the hot spots of Israel. Frank Gaffney, myself, are leading a group of about 30 or 40 people. We're going to go to the uh, Lebanese border and look at Hezbollah going over to the east of the Golan and listen to what's going on in Syria, be briefed at each of these places by uh, national security experts. Um, we're going down to the Golan, to, uh, the, to G the Gaza area where we showed some of that video of uh, the mortars that have killed some of the guys in uh, Nifrim in the Eshkol region where a mortar fell just the other day. Actually, a Qassam fell just the other day, and Israel struck back on that. And then we're going to East Jerusalem, where Jane uh, is uh, located very, very closely. And Jane and I met with a couple of others, and we spent uh, some time together. And Jane, years back from Denmark, said, uh, as a Christian, I'm going to go and stay in Israel and uh, help the uh, Jewish people and pray for them. She's been doing that. But tell us what uh, has happened in the past week or two, Jane. Well, uh, <clears throat> I think I didn't. I, I made some enemies, to put it mildly. Yes, uh, I went did. to the Temple Mount and um, just being up there praying like a tourist. And uh, things are happening on the Temple Mount. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of shouting. And uh, I just started my camera and I let it roll and I posted it on my Facebook and uh, the Muslims are saying this belongs to them. I'm believing in the Bible. So I say this is the holiest place of the Jewish people. So I'm standing up for that. I'm speaking up about how the Jewish people should be able to go back. And for that reason, some Muslims uh, kind of, I mean, with my hair and everything, they kind of picked me out when I go up there. So I received some threats in my inbox. Uh, it turned out they had been following me around and taking pictures of me, saying, we know who you are, what you're doing, leave our Aksa in peace. Leave our yeah. Aksa in peace. Uh, Ken, I'd like you to meet. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a picture right now. For those of you driving in your car. This 14, is what they sent her. Right? Yeah, this is, this is yes. about a week ago, 14 minutes after 4 o'clock on the East Coast. Different times if you're in a different time zone, obviously. But about a week or so ago, uh, Jane got a, uh, an email, and it's four pictures, four different positions that the camera was. Um, and uh, it basically said, uh, get out. we know what you're doing, Jane Kyle. I know her name. And uh, get, leave our uh, AXA um, yeah. in peace. And AXA, for those of you who have been up on the Temple Mount, there's the uh, Dome of the Rock, which is this. Oops, sorry. Dome of the Rock, and then not far away is the, the mosque. The dome is not a mosque. The dome, the Aqsa Mosque. But, Jane, how do the Muslims refer to that whole Temple Mount? Do they call it the Temple Mount? No, oh my Lord, no, they don't use that word. They don't recognize that word. The whole compound is Aqsa. So that was, they were telling me, leave our Aqsa in peace. You know, the whole place kind of like, butt off, don't come here, be quiet. All right, we're showing the latest... Uh, uh, document or latest email you got 
you standing um, in front of the dome and then the Arabic writing. What is that all about? Well, I actually woke up this morning with an email from Yehuda Glick, and uh, some of you know him. He was the he's a friend of mine and he got shot here a while ago and i got an email from him and he sent me this picture and he said do you know that uh, you're being threatened on this whole place the muslims are threatening you they have dedicated a whole place to you so he sent me this picture so i haven't seen it uh so the pictures that you see here is actually the big picture of me on the temple mount is what i have posted on my private facebook as my cover photo and the other one, the small picture, is actually from last time I was on your show. And I have only posted that on my <laughs> private Facebook. Um, oh. And Did someone just Gene took those trouble? two and wrote in Arab, you know, that uh, they need to keep an eye on me and they need to follow me. And that they think I'm Jewish, actually. They're speaking, she thinks I'm a Jewish and I'm going up there uh, praying to God and, and reading from the scriptures and which is a mockery and all these things. Well, on the good news front, wow. uh, in the good news front, Jane, at least you're taking flattering pictures of you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, hey, Jane, Jane I, 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 can I ask a quick, yeah, real quick, yeah, real quick. So, you, Yehuda Glick, is who informed you that that they were actually tracking you. It wasn't you didn't they didn't send it directly to you, and the police didn't no, notify no. you. It was another civilian. Ken, yes, yes, I did. Yehuda, Yehuda sent me this. And then actually another friend sent me the same picture and he, uh, there is a youth movement down here who is also very activated, you know, active and about going on the Temple Mount. And they keep an eye on th stuff. So they posted it on their page saying, does anybody know this girl? Because someone that needs to warn her. So my friend and Yehuda replied, we know her, she's a good friend and she's going back to the police today. Well, this, so that's th how I find out this morning. Well, this is a, yeah. I tell you what, these last pictures I saw these were really disturbing to me. I mean, these these are right out of those are the first ones. These a are week the first. Ago. This yeah. is right out of serial killer, you know, times right here. Is like four different shots at four different times a day with you just walking around. I mean, these are close shots. These aren't like far. Away, they aren't far away shots. These are spooky close, you know. And you're like, this is right out of serial killer times. It really is. Yes. Yeah. I well, mean, let's uh, yeah. let's. Uh, they are very close to me. Yes. Jerusalem, Jane. I want you to meet our our dear friend in studio, Ken Abramowitz. Uh, Ken is uh, lives here in the United States of America, but uh, is a very very dear friend of Israel. Goes back and forth quite a bit. Uh, Ken, say hello to Jerusalem, Jane. Okay. Uh, hello, Jerusalem, Hi, Ken. Jane. It's great to meet you. Uh, what are your good thoughts on uh, this situation? I mean, you're you run Save the West. You're back and forth all the time to Israel and America. Give us your, your analysis of this. Well, the, uh, I call it political Islam. Uh, the, the four worldwide political Islam terror organizations have declared war on Western civilization. And uh, the question is, how, how do we fight back? Uh, first, we, we don't even know we're in a state of war. We don't know we're in World War III, uh, uh, number one. And number two, we don't know we're fighting on four different fronts. So uh, it's very difficult to fight a war when you don't know you're in a war, and it's very difficult to fight on four fronts when you don't know that you're fighting on any of the fronts. And uh, so uh, uh, Jane's uh, problem is just a microcosm of uh, what's going on. Uh, I call Israel the eastern border of Western civilization. And uh, Israel's very important to us besides, of course, uh, for all the normal reasons, <clears throat> but when you think of it as the eastern border of Western civilization, uh, Israel has to, make, has to hold strong. And if it doesn't hold strong, uh, it has very serious implications uh, for the rest of Western civilization. That is a great is, state. It, it, I've never heard that before, but no, that, that really is, is phenomenal. Good. The eastern border of Western civilization. Did you come up with that? You made that up? You didn't get that from me? <laughs> yeah, I got it from me. <laughs> you got a coin. You got to trademark that. That's pretty good. That's damn yeah. good. The eastern border of Western civilization. I like that. May I we like use it lot. going forward? Yeah, sure. Thank we'll you. attribute it. We'll attribute Absolutely. it to, to, to Ken. The first few times. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Then we own it <laughs> after that. But um, uh, with that understanding, and we're gonna get deeply into what Ken is talking about, the four fronts and all of that. Uh, but before we let Jane go, um, is, you said Israel has to stand strong. Here we have a Christian from Denmark transplanted to the front line and now dealing with these people 
And she has a network of friends and everything, but she essentially functions on her own. What, what are your thoughts uh, of, of what Jane is doing for Israel? Uh, uh, Jane's a very brave uh, young lady, and uh, I'm very proud to meet her. Um, and I look forward to meeting her in person. Uh, the, um, uh, you should understand, every time we make a concession, whether it's we as a country, we as a government, we as an individual, uh, it just prolongs the war. And uh, well, so I have a half joke, half serious comment that the war of political Islam against Western civilization is going to last a million years. And, uh, but every time we, we concede anything, uh, it just encourages the political Islam terror organizations to be emboldened and ask for more and more and more. And uh, so eventually we're going to have to say no. So my feeling is let's just say no right now. Right up front. Yeah. And um, uh, because it's dysfunctional to con continue to give concessions. Okay. Yeah. We, we have, by the way, uh, Muslims have rights, but Jews and Christians have rights. So it's not like we're negating their rights. They want to negate our rights. <laughs> but uh, we, we're not trying to negate their rights. We're just that political Islam terror organizations don't have rights because they're political movements and political movements are not protected by any uh, constitution that I'm acquainted with. At 22 minutes after uh, the hour, Tom Trento, your host, WSBR Radio, Boca Raton, Florida, in-studio guest, Mr. Ken Abramowitz. We're going to get a little background on Ken in a moment. And uh, Skyped in live right now from Jerusalem Seven-hour difference late at night for Jerusalem Jane. Uh, she's giving us an update on what's going on. Jane, we're going to let you go, and uh, we want you to be safe. We do have that video from her. Uh, her okay, let's let's close her segment with um, the a video she made, uh, and she's put up a lot of video. She she referenced early on that she would go up and just hold a, a, a her camera up, her phone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like going to the zoo. You hold it up and the animals do all these kind of things. <laughs> you hold it up and the jihadis come and do all this crazy stuff in that, front of her. That's I know. literally we, we true. We even get a little bit of it over here. And she we get a little bit. <laughs> yeah. We've experienced some of that with these guys. <laughs> and then she would post it and they would say, what are you doing that for? And she'd say, I'm posting, posting your you, video. you know. <laughs> and, You're uh, acting stupid and I'm posting it. <laughs> that resulted in the first... Um, threat. Did you know he actually wrote that, Tom? The guy who posted the picture of me today, he, he was actually saying something in Arab about how I'm filming their kid, their children yeah, and yeah. their activities on there. Yes, I'm, I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I told you. I'm just filming what they're doing and now he's coming down on me for that. Well, Ken, I'm going to ask you in a minute after we let Jane go, how, I don't understand how a Jew, you're Jewish, you can't go up to the Temple Mount and pray. Uh, you can't, hang, you hang, on. hang on, hang on, you, know, you got to help me understand that, okay? <laughs> temple Mount, you know, Mount <laughs> Temple, Jewish Temple, exactly. you got to help me understand that. But first, um, uh, Jane also goes up to pray, and uh, one time going up there, uh, she also has a beautiful voice. Jane, we're going to conclude your segment, your report, we will catch up with you next week, or if anything, any breaking news, you contact us. But we're gonna oh, well. we're gonna go out on your uh, little video you did uh, a little while back, okay? Okay, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Good seeing you. Take it easy. Happy Here Hanukkah. We go. Here's Jane. Happy on the Hanukkah. Christmas. Here's Jane on the Temple Mount. Bye. Bye. Shem kevo maluta leola ae Sma Israel, hear O Israel, the Lord is your God. I will bless thee that bless you, I will curse thee that curse you. I bless you, Israel. I bless you from the Temple Mount. I stand with you, Israel. I love you, and I love the Jewish people. This is the most holy place for the Jewish people. Um, so I just wanted to sing this ma from this place. God bless you, Israel. Wow. Yeah, wow. 
very, very oh, wow. brave woman, um, Jerusalem Jane. And uh, uh, next time you're there, we'll, we'll hook you up to meet her. You've got to meet her because she's, she's Danish. She's very determined. That Scandinavian uh, strength, the you fortitude, know. Fortitude, yeah. Not afraid. Now, Viking strong. Viking strong. All, all, of, uh, all of the threats and all that obviously have been reported. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the Israeli security apparatus uh, has things well under control. She's fine. Um, and she's going to continue her work. It's just simply that uh, that's the way it is. Her work. She's there praying for Israel, but that particular video, they got very upset. I, I read the translated Arabic on the, uh, the Yehuda Glick sent that page, and uh, she was accused of videotaping the women on Aqsa. You remember the, the women walked in the oh frame? Oh, my. Right. And that you can't do that. You can't videotape Muslim women on Aqsa. That's not, that's not right. So, um, Ken, what's going on on the Temple Mount? Uh, why... Why are the jihadis upset that uh, she is um, uh, taping on the Temple Mount? Tell me why, please, uh, Jewish people can't pray on the Temple Mount. Damon, you're Jewish. I'm well, Jewish. Yeah. Let, let's have Ken answer that question, okay? Um, Ken, why can't Jewish people go up to the Temple Mount... The, I think that's Mount Moriah, is that what it is? There was a temple there, a couple of temples. Were they Muslim temples? Jewish temples. Jewish temples. Why, can't, why can't Jews go up there and pray? Well, there's a variety of reasons. Uh, there's a, a Muslim uh, political Islam response, and there's an uh, Israeli response. Uh, uh, Israel uh, doesn't want to provoke uh, uh, political Islam um, terror organizations. And, and so therefore puts rules on Jews uh, relative to their ability um, to go up to the Temple Mount. They can only go certain days at certain times, and they can't pray. Uh, and um, so the Israeli government's imposing that on its Jewish citizens, and uh, indirectly on its Christian citizens uh, who might want to pray, whether uh, uh, in a Jewish sense or in a Christian sense. Uh, now, from the political Islam point of view, uh, they don't recognize Jews or Christians to have any rights anywhere. And so they're just using this as an example uh, to show that uh, Jews and Christians must be second-class citizens, because in their minds, uh, that's the, the way the, uh, the world works. And so uh, uh, they, um, uh, unless they're pushed back by Jews and Christians, they will continually demand more and more and more and more. And that's why I mentioned earlier on, it's time to just say no uh, to uh, any extra demand by any pol political Islam terror organization anywhere, uh, because it's, it's not like you, there's some compromise here. So um, the, the way to end the continuous series of concessions is to just say no. Well, uh, you heard Jerusalem Jane, and that's not her name. We gave her... Jerusalem, because she's in Jerusalem. But you heard her uh, reference, Yehuda Glick, sending her the, uh, the Facebook page, informing her what's going on. Yehuda Glick is part of a movement, and we met some others there, David Haivri. Do you know David Haivri? We met some others that are trying uh, to work to have Jews regain their right to pray on the Temple Mount. That's crazy. It's crazy stuff. But the, but the, well, let me ask Imam Abdullah. Why can't the, the Jews pray on the Temple Mount, Imam? Uh, first of all, I do not uh, like when you call it the Temple Mount. We call it Al-Aqsa. <laughs> and uh, we do not allow the Jews there because it is uh, run by the Jordanian Waqf and uh, and we have decided that it is Muslims only. We do not like the descendants of pigs and apes walking around our most, uh, our third most holy site. Your third most holy yes, our third most holy site where uh, Muhammad magically flew in the middle of the night once. So you have three holy sites. <laughs> yes, you have yes, yes. Mecca, Medina. And, Actually, uh, we have very many millions of holy sites, okay. but this is number three. Well, uh, the <laughs> Mecca and Medina, is it okay if Ken and I, Ken's Jewish, I'm Christian? <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I didn't heard. ask my question yet. Is it okay if Ken and I <laughs> travel with you to Mecca as, <laughs> as the three Abrahamic faiths 
going to visit the Kaaba. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh. Tom, you know very well uh, uh, that we do not allow non-Muslims, kufar, you filthy infidels, into Mecca or Medina. So we fact, we fact can't come to the, your city. Absolutely not. The Jews can't go to their own Temple Mount. Correct. Okay, I got In it. In fact, they have their it. own roads. They have like a whites only, except it says Muslims only road, and then had in the Saudi other, Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, they actually have signs posted Muslims only. It's it's complete and total apartheid, or black it segregation. It is not apartheid uh, because uh, everyone is Muslim, so it is not apartheid. Okay, well, Ken, you're <laughs> you're on the forefront of uh, of trying to save Western civilization, and um, we know you have uh, you have a, a real job, a real life. Besides this insanity of trying to deal with these issues, what do you do for real? What's what's your background? Uh, I am involved in healthcare venture capital, and uh, we and my partners, our fund, we invest in young companies in pharmaceuticals and medical devices uh, in, in the Western world. Uh, we look for very innovative uh, young companies, and uh, we. Uh, finance them to do their clinical trials so they can get products to the marketplace. All right, so that's, uh, and you spent 30, 35 years. Uh, and, uh, 35 years in healthcare, and I spend uh, four days a week uh, in, in my job investing in young companies, and I spend two days a week in public service. Uh, and I give, I created a speech and give speeches on how to save Western civilization from itself. Right, and you're a high school dropout, right? <laughs> I think you went to Columbia? Yeah, I went on to graduate in Columbia. I majored in chemistry, and then I went to Harvard Business School. Okay. Well, so it's the same thing. Yeah, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a high school dropout. Does it bother you when you see how crazy liberal the, both of those schools have gotten over yeah. the past few decades? Does I that know. make you bonkers? Yeah, it's, it's very sad um, because uh, the, the, the leftist ideology, which I call a false narrative, has, has permeated uh, many of the great universities. And uh, the leftists, although they're evil, they're very smart. They realize that you have to control people's minds and you have to control the educational system so you can uh, mistrain, uh, miseducate people so that they become like you when they get older. And they're very effective. And it's one of the reasons why we actually live in basically two countries. We have uh, what I would call a normal country of uh, what I call rational centrists, like ourselves. And then we have an abnormal false narrative of the leftists. And approximately half and half of the population is part of each of these. And it's sad for me to see that approximately half the people believe in false narratives. All right, hang on. I think this is rubbing. We're going to move this for a second away from that. That's, that's what that noise was? I yes. Think. There yes. we go. That's a, that'll be better. That's what I was trying to cure, cure earlier. <laughs> okay, okay. And I saw your hand coming out like a monster <laughs> on the screen. Um, Ken, we, got a, we have a lot of questions for you. And in the, uh, the remaining moments of our show, it's 34 after the hour, um, we, we can't get into all of them in depth, but we want your, your general opinion. You've, uh, you've been successful in the business world. You help Israel quite a bit. You're dedicating this public service work to go out and deliver your speech. What's the thesis or the main proposition of your speech? And we have people cycling through on the radio and watching. If somebody goes, I got to talk to that guy, how could they get in touch with you right now? Uh, well, I, I have a website, savethewest.com, and it provides uh, information about my thoughts and also uh, uh, email how to email me and contact me. And you can do that through uh, savethewest.com. Yes. Okay, I see it right over here, savethewest.com. Nice. And there's a mechanism to contact. To do all that. So if you want to get in touch with Ken Abramowitz, uh, our special in-studio guest, he um, is the director of his website, Save the West. It's up on our screen, savethewest, very simple, dot com. Go there. Much of what we're talking about right now is encapsulated on the website. What's the, the I know you're running all over the world because we, we heard you in Israel, we heard you in Palm Beach, we heard you in New York, we heard you all over the place. What's the proposition, the main big idea? We talk about a big idea every show. What's the big idea? And as one of my professors used to say, take the cookies down to the lower shelf. For the average person to understand what you're trying to do, what's the big idea? The big idea is that Western civilization is under attack 
from the inside and from the outside. In other words, we have um, domestic enemies, we have international enemies. And to save the West, we all have to do more. It might be more, more money, more time, more energy, more votes, more, more self-education, more education of our friends, and we all have to do more. Uh, also, what we have to do is we have to vote for better people to represent us. And I ask uh, myself, uh, every time someone speaks, Democrat or Republican, I, I grade them, I pretend I'm a professor, I give them a grade on the three big issues that you can't be wrong on. To any important society must have a strong economy, number one. Number two, must believe in its own culture. And number three, must have a strong military to protect itself. Oh, you are a hater. You are a hater, man. It's basically modeled off of Ronald Reagan. Yeah. It's, I didn't invent anything here. To me, it's just obvious that any society has to be able to do those three things. So uh, when I, uh, people say, oh, who are you voting for? What do you think about this person or that person? I say, let's grade them. Let's grade them together. Grade them. So that, can their ideas grow an economy? Will their ideas protect our culture? And uh, will their ideas protect us militarily? When people say to me, what do you mean about culture? I say, look, the foundations of our culture, the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, Bill of Rights, and uh, Constitution. Now, there are other documents. I'm, uh, I'm just saying, if you had to pick three documents, uh, those would be the three documents. And, and uh, I, I want politicians who believe in those uh, documents uh, and believe in the philosophy, the history, believe in the uh, values uh, that are inherent in those documents. It, it, it's not revolutionary uh, to say that. These are the pillars of Western civilization. So uh, uh, that's what I do. I, I try to encourage people to grade our politicians and upgrade our politicians till they're actually capable of doing their job. Now, when you give uh, your presentation, um, you have PowerPoint, all of that, and and uh, afterwards, the people come up and go, oh, that was great, that was great. And then, but what can I do? Can Abramowitz, okay, I need to help save Western civilization. What can I do? How do you respond to those folks? Well, my first response is do more. So, uh, for example, uh, I spend two days a week on public service. One of those days is educating myself. Another one of those days is educating other people. Think of it as being a student one day and a professor one day. And so uh, I tell people, read more. There's a lot of people who've written a lot of books uh, about Western civilization, uh, either historical or current, and spend one day educating yourself. If you're not going to devote one day, you, you can spend an hour a day. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly one, uh, one specific day. Uh, but educate yourself, and after you educate yourself, educate your children, your grandchildren, your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your associates, and, and be an informed voter. You can't have a democracy, successful democracy, if people aren't educated. Since so many of us have been miseducated, we have to basically educate ourselves to be effective. All right, here's, um, this is great stuff, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ken Abramowitz here. You can contact Ken at savethewest.com at uh, 39 minutes after the hour, 4 o'clock. On the East Coast, Tom Trento, you're a host, Enemies of the State. Name of the show, we uh, are here, The United West, similar name, Save the West, The United West, word.org. Ken, one of the things you could tell everybody when they say what we can do, say write the United West a check. That's what you can tell them. Because we are on the front lines battling uh, these issues. And uh, let me tell you, it's a battle. And we're going to have a real battle 684 days from today. We here at the United West can have started a countdown to uh, November 8th, 2016, the second Tuesday in November. We view that as uh, the Armageddon election of the West and there's another election on March 17, 2015 in Israel. Share your thoughts on what has to happen on the eastern front of Western civilization on March 17, 2015. And on uh, the center of the United States on November 8, 2016 in order for the West to survive. Well, uh, every democracy is full of two groups of people. 
um, what I call rational centrists. Uh, in other words, people who believe in a strong economy, a strong culture, and a strong military. Uh, I call those people rational centrists, people who believe in the rule of law, the Constitution, freedom of speech, um, uh, uh, separation of church and state in America. Yeah. And um, these are just normal things we don't even think about anymore. But uh, that's rational centrists. And rational centrists generally are long-term oriented people. Uh, we're thinking about children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Uh, we're thinking uh, many, many years into the future. And, and the other half of the population is very short-term oriented. Uh, uh, they can be called leftists, progressives, um, liberals. Um, but uh, progressives would be the, uh, the best name for them. It's really, they're really socialists. It's about uh, a quarter of the Democratic Party. Uh, the Democratic Party really is the Socialist Workers Party yeah. pretending to be the Democratic Party. <laughs> Uh, if JFK could come back to life for the day and we explain to him what's going on, he says, I'm a Republican. What happened to the Democratic Party? I don't believe this. And so it, think of it as an intellectual battle between rational centrists and leftists. And so uh, Israel is approximately now two-thirds rational centrists and one-third leftists. Uh, in 1948, in its founding, it was the opposite. It was approximately two-thirds leftists and one-third rational centrists. And, and over the 65 years, it's been a flip-flop. And, and the reason it changed is because 25,000 people got killed. And when 25,000 soldiers and civilians get killed, it causes people to realize that leftist ideology is detrimental to your health, uh, whether it's your individual health or the health of your society. And so uh, um, Israel's in good shape now. Two-thirds of the people are rational centrists. So it's only a question of which rational centrists will be running the country. People have faith in the Prime Minister, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. I expect him to get reelected. There'll be the usual fighting, uh, intellectual fighting, that's inherent in a democracy, that's healthy. And, uh, but um, he should emerge as a stronger candidate because the leftist parties, uh, like um, uh, your Lapid's party, the Labour Party, they're just dis discredited because they're not capable of growing the economy, protecting the culture, <laughs> protecting the people physically. And so um, it should be a good, a good election and uh, they'll have their usual democratic fight. Uh, in the US, we have the same fight between rational centrists and uh, leftists. And I expect our rational centrists to win. We've had six years of failure uh, um, led by the um, the, the progressives. Progressives, yeah. Another two years from today, people are going to say, I don't want to hear from these people again. They, they can't grow the economy, won't protect our culture, won't protect us physically, and they will be replaced. We've already replaced them in the House and in the Senate, uh, and then uh, we'll replace them uh, in the presidency. From your lips, Ken, to God's ears, but uh, from this studio to Israel right now, let's go check in with... Uh, our man on the ground, Ari Agozi. Ari, are you there? Hey, where is he? Good afternoon. He's right here. He's coming. There, oh, there he is. Ari, how are you? Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? I hear you, yes. I want you to meet uh, Ken Abramowitz. Ken, meet Ari Agozi. Hi, Ken. You guys will meet um, the next time you're over there. We'll right. introduce you to, uh, to Ari. But Ari is a dear friend of ours, comes on weekly to do a, a short update. Um, has, a, you know, obviously everybody's IDF and reservist and all of that. Uh, but he's involved. Homeland Security home. Yeah, he's, uh, he's involved in national security for Israel. When I was over there recently, uh, set up some very interesting meetings with key people that we'll tell you about. But he took me into IAI, Israel Aeronautical Industries, into the drone factory, watching the drones be made. And I had a demonstration of all of that stuff. Uh, Ari, voice, um, what's, the, how the are you? My voice is not clear. What's that? My voice no, is not clear. Something is wrong with the voice. Uh-oh. I'll call you right back, Go Ari. Uh, we're going right to hook up the, the connection. Two minutes. One minute. We uh, normally have a very, very good connection with him. We had a great connection with uh, Jerusalem Jane. But have you been in that uh, IAI? Isn't that pretty, pretty amazing? Very impressive, very really awesome. impressive stuff. Um, uh, so when, when's the uh, next time you're going back? Uh, February. 
You got to come with us in March. Yes, I expect to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That should be a, a very good trip. I, I had an opportunity. Um, let's see if the voice is any better, the connection. Ari, right, any better? Yes. Good? Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, um, give us a quick uh, update on what's going on in the, uh, in the Knesset. But the other day you had a little, uh, little two excursions by uh, the Hamas in Gaza. They seem to be test firing missiles out to the sea, but they, they, did, they turned their targeting 180 degrees and it went right where you took me in Eshkol. What, uh, what was yes. that all about? The rocket, hit, the rocket hit very near to the place that we visited uh, during your visit. And you know that the Israeli Air Force this time retaliated, uh, destroying a, a, cement, uh, a cement factory in Gaza that is uh, doing uh, constructions for the new tunnels, uh, courtesy of the cement that Israel is, uh, is uh, sending to Gaza for humanitarian uh, purposes, which is a big, a big mistake, in my opinion. And uh, uh, as I told you, uh, this will never end. This is only a, a, a time between, between fighting, between wars. It will never end there. Uh, the, the, if you remember the, um, uh, big, uh, the big forces, the big countries in the world uh, said that they will contribute billions of dollars uh, for this restoration, the rebuilding of Gaza, uh, something like 2% arrived to Gaza uh, to date. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, more money will flow. It's easy to talk, it's harder to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, transfer money. So the situation in Gaza is, uh, is very bad. And they, they, as you said, they are trying to improve their rockets. They are launching rockets into the sea almost every day. <clears throat> the Israelis, uh, the Israeli intelligence is following. They are trying to make those rockets more accurate, to get more uh, more range. And I think that another round is only a matter of time, as as I told you when, when you were here. Hey Ari, uh, you're you're in the middle of this stuff with your website, Israel's Homeland Security Home. How could the folks get in touch with you? Uh, when we go out speaking places, people ask about you. Uh, how could somebody get in touch with you? And uh, what is your, your website all, all about? You're what? The, you're the general editor, right? Yes, I'm the general the editor of this website. We have decided that, uh, as you know, after September 11, Homeland Security became a big thing in the world. Homeland Security now uh, gets almost the same uh, budgets as defense, because Homeland Security is everything, from the armed, armed guard in the, in the entrance of a mall to cyber security. You just saw what happened with Sony and, and North Korea cyber war. So we decided to establish exactly two years ago to establish a website that will deal only with Homeland Security. And uh, we were right, because Homeland Security creates very, uh, very big interest in the world. And Israel, as because what it is, is a source for many technologies, many uh, techniques that are uh, related to Homeland Security. And that's why our website is so successful. If people want to get in touch, uh, on the website, there is an info email. And if they send me an email, I promise to answer each one of them immediately. All right, that's Ari Agozi at uh, 49 minutes after the hour, 4 o'clock on the East Coast in Florida. Tom Trento, your host, Enemies of the State. Ari, we only have you for a couple of more minutes. Um, Ken, if you have any questions, uh, uh, you could ask in a second here. Give us a, a short update on the Knesset and the preparations for the March election. What's going on there? Big, big, as we say in Hebrew, big balagan, big, a big mess. Uh, people are going from, from party to party. People are accusing other people. Parties split. Uh, parties uh, uh, are being welded together. I think that many, many changes will be, uh, we'll, we'll see many changes in the political map until, the, until March. Uh, these elections are, there's, there's no, as I told you before, there's no reason for, for, for these elections. 
So uh, people are trying to to get a better a better uh, starting point. Uh, accusations are are flying from each side, and you don't know which is right, which is left, which is center. It's a big a big mess, a big mess. Instead of dealing with with the problems now, they are all involved in in accusation, in in things like that, which is very bad for a country like Israel. It's even bad for a country like England, but especially for a country like Israel that faces so many so many problems. And if you see what happens in the world, only today, the French government said that they are sending 300 uh, uh, soldiers to the uh, to the streets of big cities in 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 France because they had a they had a terror attack two days ago in Nantes. Eleven people were hurt when a car uh, ran into a group of people. One of them died, died today, and and uh, and the world is everything is crazy. Uh, yesterday uh, uh, we saw a TV report of uh, uh, from Channel Two on the Israeli TV. Uh, one journalist went to Iraq and Syria and got in touch with the Kurdish Kurdish uh, uh, fighters that are fighting against ISIS, and he asked them questions about how many people they beheaded how many people they tortured. This danger is a danger for the world, not for Israel. It's a danger for the world. And I think that the world is still is still sleeping. And Israel is facing this problem, not ISIS uh, at that moment, but this is around the corner, around the corner. It, it, it can hit us any minute. And instead of dealing with all these things, elections, you know, the, the world I'm, I'm not allowed to use, but I <laughs> I'll use it. it. I'll use it. I'm ready. You ready? You ready. guys ready? No, no, I'm, I'm, hey, not, Ari. I'm not using it. I Ari, use it. watch. I'll get you in trouble with the, the I'm FCC. Gonna, I'm going to speak for you. What Ari is saying is all this stuff going on. You ready? Yes. yes. All this stuff is bull. Beep. Okay. <laughs> How's that? Exactly. That's it. That's the situation. We uh, Israel is getting ready for Christmas. Uh, I saw a um, Christmas tree in Jaffa. Uh, a week ago, um, in in Jerusalem, of course, in uh, in Nazareth, and uh, the Christians here are getting here to are getting ready to celebrate. You know that Israel, everything is open. Uh, everything can celebrate whatever they want, and uh, uh, many tourists came to Israel for for Christmas this year, in spite of the war uh, during during the summer. Uh, there's a, a flow of tourists coming to. To the holy places for uh, for Christians, and uh, I hope that they will will have good time in Israel and go and pray in the places they 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 uh, <laughs> they usually go to. Uh, are and, the uh, Jewish visitors? Now. Let's hope that it stays like this uh, for a long time. Long are time. are the Jewish visitors going to pray on the Temple Mount this week also? <laughs> by by the way, uh, two hours ago, a, a Muslim uh, preacher. Uh, was shown on one of the Israeli channels, and he said a very uh, surprising thing. He said that the Muslims should allocate a place for Jews to pray on Temple on Temple Mount. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. This is this is amazing. Um, I'm I'm not sure that they will will accept it, but he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. dead. He's going to be separated dead. from his I five know, bucks but, on that uh, one. No, Jews are not allowed to pray on Temple Mount. Uh, we talked about it. This is, uh, again, this is the word I cannot use. This is crazy. Yeah. And uh, now, um, after what happened in Jerusalem, because some member of the Knesset went there, uh, the police doesn't allow any of them uh, I, to know, go to the Temple Mount. And f uh, for, for the time being, it's a status quo. No, no, I don't know what, happened, what will happen next. Seriously, Ari, I, I, I have a question about this. Why are they not allowed to even pray on the Temple Mount? What is the rationale well, behind Ken just it? Went, well, it, well I'm, just I'm, I'm not short I'm answer because we got to move on. Religious Jew, but I understand that the rabbi said that as as the uh, exact place of the temple yeah. is not known, so if a Jew goes to the Temple Mount, he may step on the holy place. That's why some of the rabbis said that it's totally forbidden to 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 pray that's for the from the religious uh, side but you know that uh, after the six-day war moshe dayan uh, made some decisions that are deplorable 
and he gave the control of the Temple Mount to the Waqf and the Jordanian government. So if you take all these together, uh, Jews are not allowed. And if they go there, uh, they, they create a big, a big confrontation and stones are being thrown and the police uh, are called to, to separate because it's a very, very sensitive uh, a place. It's a, it's a barrel full, full of explosives. And, uh, and that's, I think that it's a good decision made by the government now to, 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 to freeze the situation until there's some, some, uh, some uh, solution. Because when the members of Knesset went every, every second day to the Temple Mount, uh, you had to, uh, to uh, send uh, some, something like 500 policemen, and this is crazy. Hey, just a All little right. update yeah, gotta, for France. Gotta. Update for France. Shots fired at Paris Synagogue. Miss Rabbi. That's yeah, since we've gone on the air. Now, That's since we've gone on the air. It's all over. It's all uh, over 56 Europe. minutes after the hour, shots fired in France. France is heating up. We've been over there many times, and we've been in the middle of a lot of that stuff. I would already. I was in the middle of 30,000 Hamas. In the middle. In the middle in front of the Louvre. Had they known, they would have lopped your infidel head off. I printer. know. Hey, Ari, thanks for the update. we got to go. Uh, we will see you next week. You take care. Stay safe. Uh, Shalom. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, Aria Gozi, general editor, Israel's Homeland Security Home, on the ground, calls it as it is. Ken, we've got a few moments remaining. What, what message do you want to get out to, uh, to Israel? We've got a lot of people watching Israel and listening, a lot of people uh, in the United States, iHeartRadio, uh, blogs all over the place. We're getting out all over. What, what's... What thoughts you want to leave the people with the day before Christmas? Well, Israel has to do uh, what I said before, that any important country, any, any, not important country, any country has to do, has to make sure that the economy grows so that it has jobs for its people and, and people pay taxes and the government has money. Uh, number two, it has to continuously remind itself of its Jewish roots, of its democratic roots and um, uh, Christian roots and uh, must stay uh, believers in themselves. And number three, they have to have a strong military, whether it's the IDF or the internal security or the Mossad. Uh, um, Israel has to have a, a very vigilant um, defensive force. So um, those are three simple things to do. If it's simple things to say, they're actually not so simple to do. And so um, I, I call it blocking and tackling, uh, number one. Number two, uh, Israel is being criticized by much of the Western world. Uh, uh, but they should understand that this criticism is not sincere. When the uh, Europeans, uh, countries one by one, uh, uh, encourage a Palestinian state without negotiations <laughs> over the next few years, those countries aren't acting in their own self-interest. Those countries, the foreign policy has been taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood, one of, one of the four terror organizations. And those countries are no longer capable of acting in their own self-interest. Because a Palestinian state, uh, if it ever were to come to fruition, would last for about two days and then will be invaded by the four terror organizations. In other words, Iran, uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Muslim Brotherhood, Saudi Wahhabis, will uh, invade the um, Palestinian state within two days, occupy it, take it over, and create the tranquility that we see in Iraq and Syria right today. <laughs> and we'll have thousands of dead Palestinian Arabs. Why is, why is that in the interest of Europe? It's not in the interest of Europe, but it's in the interest of the Muslim Brotherhood. And those countries are no longer capable of acting in their own self-interest. So Israel has to stay strong, even when many Western countries that are normally their friends uh, st uh, stop to act in their own self-interest, and Israel has to remind them, why are you asking us to do things that are not in our self-interest, but they're not in your self-interest? Why don't you represent the people of France for a change and not the Muslim brother? All right, ec excellent points, uh, Ken Abramowitz. We thank you for coming by today in our studio. Um, we're going to take you for a little tour of our new studio in a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we want you to get the size of this. See if you, see if you can take all of this in. <laughs> then, uh, then we'll show you where we're going to be. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one day before... Christmas for all of those all those of you celebrating Christmas tomorrow. Have a wonderful time with yes. uh, your families. We will have a show on, so stop everything at 4 o'clock. Listen and watch. Until then, 
We'll see you on the road.